Hey, welcome back to No Hype Beer Reviews. Very excited for today's beer comparison. Um, if it's your first time to the channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing. Uh, hit the notification bell below, get all the updates. Uh, so today's idea came courtesy of the uh, Dutch Beer Geek. Uh, if you guys don't follow those Dutch dudes, uh, they're awesome. Um, uh, it's very cool. And if you don't speak the language, you can uh, put on captions that translate into English. You can actually watch their videos even if you don't speak the language. Um, and yeah, definitely worth checking those guys out. I'll put a link to his channel specifically uh, in the uh, description box below. So he was like, if you have them, you should, and I, he could see him behind me. Uh, he's like, you should compare these two. And then Charles Boswell uh, was like, yeah, in Rochefort too, uh, which I actually did have uh, tucked away. So, uh, okay, so <laughs> it's Saturday. Um, I got all my chores done. It's a little after lunchtime, so I can like, spread uh, out the drinking. I'll do this, the comparison on camera, cap them, and just slowly finish them throughout the rest of the day. Um, all right, so they are different vintages, though, so I wanted to talk about that. So I looked it up, which was a huge pain, but um, the Rochefort is from actually, so I'm filming this in November, is actually from November 2014, so it's five years old. Uh, the St. Bernardist is from uh, March of 2012. So 14, 12. This one, because it's Westy, it has information on the cap and I wax sealed them. You can tell this one's older because the first time I ever did wax seal, I used an old candle uh, actually for the wax. And it does not do the same thing as actual bottle wax. But anyway, um, so when I take, I'll take this one off first so I can kind of tell what the date is. It looks like, according to what I found online, you just subtract three years from like the Best Buy uh, date on the top. So yeah, let's see. Uh, I have somewhat proper glassware. I don't have a Rochefort glass, so I substituted in a Chimay. No, I'm not gonna be taking a Chimay Blue Label and seeing how that compares to these. Although I have done that in real life. Uh, I threw in a Three Philosophers, a friend of mine. We did a big old uh, quad um, uh, blind comparison, and um, these were the top three, if I remember correctly. Um, all right, so this says it's also from March. And then 2014. Okay, so this one's, yeah, March 2014. Okay, I might as well open them all, I guess. Good hiss on that one still. And I actually forgot I had this Rochefort when uh, Charles mentioned that. I'm like, I can't do it. No hype, no buy, November. Uh, and then I checked, I'm like, oh, there is one back there. Um, but anyway, yeah, really excited. Try not to pour too much, because again, I want to... You know, not die. Um, despite doing a beer review channel, I don't drink a whole heck of a lot. Usually, like one beer a day, and it might be a big beer, you know. But so I'm not used to drinking this much uh, in a day. Okay, so right off the bat, we can see which one is the creamiest. So we got, I mean, props to Westy, I guess. Um, uh, it's like the Glowlocks and the Three Bears. Too much uh, foam, too little, just right. Um, geez. Just rinse these glasses out too, but there's still stuff sticking. Um, maybe for me to minimize, <laughs> potentially knocking things over, I'll put them like that. All right. Color-wise, it's, it's that brown. It, it does have ruby red, actually a little bit of orange in it. Um, I have very good lighting and since it's, uh, uh, earlier in the day from what I usually record, there's actually light outside, uh, helping, um, kind of like that cola thing. So if you don't know, St. Bernardus apparently is the original Westy recipe and, um, they do look pretty similar. The, the size of the glass and the shape, I should say really more specifically makes this one look darker, beautiful red notes in there though, as well. Still that brown color. Yeah. It looks beautiful. And did enough of this go down? Some are kind of color. Let's see if I do it on the side a little bit, if I can get a little less foam. Hear my cat meowing in the background. I hope that's not too annoying. All right. Actually, they're all pretty similar. This one looks a little bit closer to this one in terms of brown, but I mean, they really do look very close. I, I hope what, you, what you're seeing is similar to what I'm seeing. But again, consistently brown, but with that little red crimson in there. Uh, so they look pretty darn close. Definitely all look in that quad family. Uh, let's see about the aromas. Oh, 
rum soaked raisins. So you live in that alcohol. Um, one of the things I like in quads is um, that grape juice note quality. This definitely has that, which is wonderful. You get the molasses, almost like a, like a gingerbread thing. And it, it might be because I just, what I had for lunch had ginger in it, so maybe it's just kind of in my head. Um, let's see what the Westy 12. Noticeably, this has less of that grape aroma. But that raisin, not quite as rum soaked as I kind of got out of this one, but definitely has a raisin dried fruit thing. Molasses, anise as well in this for sure. A little bit of that black licorice. Ah, uh, there's some of that grape thing finally. Okay. They both smell like really good. Um, and that's going to be, I'll be honest with you, this is going to be a really hard comparison because I love all three of these beers and they're all going to be amazing. But uh, I'll do my due diligence. Mmm, this is different. Okay. Mmm. A little bit more muted, even though I got it in my mustache. I get, it's spicy, and I mean that in terms of, like, I'm getting that cinnamon nutmeg, a little bit of anise, but I'm not getting the, the, the grape, I'm not getting the dried fruit right now. It's a little drier. There's that molasses that was throughout, so that definitely is a, is a, a byline of all of these, a through line. little licorice too but yeah it's interesting how it kind of went down in terms of that grape quality and i'm still getting that some here as well all right i guess i'll just keep kind of going from my right to left your left to right uh cheers oh it's so good um, so actually follows the aroma pretty well. Wow, that's so good. Sorry. Um, so it does have some of that uh, grape juice thing that again, I really like in quads. And like, I was really excited when, um, uh, St. or no, Sierra Nevada, sorry. Uh, Sierra Nevada did their o Ovila, Ovilia, whatever it is. And they did like a plum version. You know, yeah. Plums are not grapes, obviously. But like, yes, like that thing in quads, definitely a fan of it in, in the dark Belgian styles. Um, so glad that's coming through. The spicy thing, it's so crazy that these beers don't have any of those baking spices in them for how much they come through. Um, I do get a little bit of molasses thing, the dried fruit, but really it was, uh, I gotta do another sip to really describe it well. Yeah, you get some of that star anise um, licorice kind of thing. Faint cinnamon and clove, but it's there. Yeah, that grape, um, grape, I hate to say grape jelly because it doesn't sound refined enough. It's not a jam, you know, but like it has like this grape jelly thing too. Without, without being overly sweet, it has a, almost like a rye peppery thing too. Uh, it's it's relatively it's dry. There's sweetness, but there is dryness there, which is super pleasant. If I remember correctly, that was one of the reasons. That was like one like when we were doing this blind years ago. Between these two, I think this one was a hair sweeter, so it kind of went to preference if you like drier or sweeter for this style. Uh, actually, let me do a little palate cleansing. This is just despite being in a mug, it's just water. Cheers. Mm-hmm. So it is sweeter. You do get a lot of the same flavors that I was just describing, but in a sweeter vintage, or sweeter version. 
Ah, interesting. Okay. More grape in this. Slight more cinnamon note in it. Again, it doesn't have any cinnamon or grape in it. But more of a grape cinnamon thing. That that rye brown bread thing, which was true of, of Westie, definitely here. It's interesting. It's not that this is a dry version of this or this is a, a, a sweeter version of this. But that is true, dry or sweeter. Lot, like Venn diagram time, lots of similarities in the middle. Those are two things on the sides, the dryness and the sweetness. But it's like the varying degrees of how much these different individual things come through. Um, so yeah, cinnamon, yeah, that brown bread, that rye spiciness kind of a thing. Wow. Also a very good beer. This one might have a little bit more of a peppery thing, um, perhaps from the yeast and what, what it's been doing for the last, and again, so, um, 2014, 2012, um, what did I say that was? Minus three, 2014. So again, this is the oldest by two years, um, which could also maybe explain a little bit more of the smooth sweetness that I'm getting out of it. Excuse me, so good. One more sip, so good. Look at that, like Belgian dark or dark dark candy kind of thing. Wow. Oh, that's good. A little caramel. Not caramel, like burnt sugar, because that's sweet enough to be caramel. See about the Rochefort, the one that at least aroma wise was so different. See about the taste. Wow. All right, so Charles Boswell, thank you for mentioning this beer. He also mentioned La Trap, but I don't have any of that, so trying to stay true to the no by November. Not surprising given how much head this, how I poured it. This is so creamy. That mouthfeel, it's it's killer. It, it It's almost like the beer's on nitro. Wow, like that is so... Mmm. Wow, that's good. For how creamy it is, you have this drying quality. There is that grape note, but without the sweetness of when you think of grape juice. That brown bread, what I keep saying, like rye kind of thing is there. When I'm talking about these baking spices, the cinnamon, nutmeg, that kind of stuff, and like the pepperiness that these two beers have, this interestingly has those things, but they're not like bright. Like these ones, they kind of pop. This one, it's like, oh yeah, it's there. Interesting. Whereas these ones, it's kind of like little like fireworks of, of, of those uh, of flavors coming through. If you like quads and you want all the flavors a quad can have really well-rounded, uh, uh, you don't want those peaks and valleys of flavors, you kind of just want that consistent quad thing, Rochefort would be your clear winner uh, based on what I'm drinking now, these three bottles with these at these different vintages and, and uh, uh, ages. But that mouthfeel, for sure, I'm not going to say this is my favorite of the three right now, but it does have the best mouthfeel, for sure, hands down. That creaminess is, is unparalleled. A little cherry fruitiness. Without, be, without the sweetness, there's also, it's reminiscent of um, like a dessert that uh, you use bananas or even like plantains perhaps. And there's like a nice uh, uh, char caramel, uh, uh, caramelized I mean, uh, like the sugars on top. You took a torch to them or put them on the broiler or something. W without that added sweetness, but it has that banana char uh, thing. Mm, wow. 
So I do have a huge sweet tooth, so I'm loving this St. Bernardus. Um, but that Westie is so good. I don't want to drink anymore right now. I was going to do a cuvee because I, earlier today I watched uh, Joe from the Beer Patrol. Make sure you check out this video that he did where he did uh, three philosophers base the bourbon aged bourbon barrel aged one and the red wine barrel aged one. And I had sent him a mystery beer of the red wine barrel aged one, um, which he did very well. He actually nailed it when he did the mystery beer version of that. But he did cuvee, cuvee those things, those threes three things and I was like man like I definitely when I, I knew I was doing this I'm like I'm gonna have to do that um whatever I can pour a little bit more I guess here here's why I'm rambling right now I'm thinking it's St. Bernardus but again because I typically like sweeter things but I just want to do one more check to make sure that this is not gonna be better little piney minty menthol kind of thing too which is very pleasant in here and now I'm getting in this as well I'm gonna say the St. Bernard's I like a hair better right now it's got the two extra years I don't know if it's just an age thing and I, I do typically like quads fresh are fine but I typically like quads aged longer um but yeah, that's, that's really good. All right. <laughs> Exhale like that. Let's see what these do. There was, I think, a little bit more in there. Just trying to get roughly equal amounts. So yeah, it looks, shocker, it's, it's a little darker than some of these ones were because of this in the middle. But yeah, it's got the nice red crimson as well. But yeah, a little, little darker. Um, not surprising. Let's see about the aroma. Ooh, oh baby. Okay, that is great. Wow. Joe had mentioned this in his Three Philosophers. One again, go watch that. If I forget to uh, put a link to it, go search that out. The Beer Patrol and in his, uh, it was his 600th review. And again, congratulations. 600, 601, 602, because he did three different beers. But um, he, he was correct when he meant correct when he mentioned, um, excuse me, um, Sometimes when you cuvee things, it doesn't make it any better. It can make it worse. That aroma is like the best of all three of these experiences. You have that grape juice. You have the dried fruits. You have, you have these baking spices uh, coming through but not overwhelming. That bran, brown bread kind of a thing. The rye spicy kind of a thing going too. That pine mint thing, I was I finally picked up towards the end with these two, definitely is in there. This aroma is killer. It's got me really excited for the taste. Cheers. That is really interesting. You, wow, okay. It's doing what I was hoping it would do, but I do want to drink these separately. You're getting the addition of the awesome mouthfeel from the Rochefort. Um, the, the, the grapey, the sweet, the, the um, uh, brown bread, the, the, the baking spices, all that stuff is coming in pretty good. Uh, um, it, it, you know, some of like checks and balances, like here where it was kind of like these these bursts of those flavors, and here it was just kind of subtly there. It is kind of like a nice uh, middle ground of that. Um, I'm just really glad all the unique things I was describing when I pour them together, I'm still able to get. Wow, it's cool. That grape note, so good. A little smoky and dark chocolate. I forgot to mention in some of these that probably were there, or I didn't that I forgot that I didn't pick up that would have been there if I was perceiving them better. Wow. But yeah, I do pre prefer these all separate beers. Awesome idea, guys. Thank you for that. Uh, I got a bunch of uh, 
uh, ideas of beers that people want me to uh, take off and, and drink during the month of November. So I'll be uh, going through those uh, as the month goes on. So definitely uh, be on the lookout for those. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much to the, uh, oh yeah, I almost said the wrong name, to uh, Charles Boswell and Dutch Beer Geek. I almost said the wrong name, almost said a different guy, uh, one of the other Dutch guys. And I uh, don't want to give them any credit because you had the idea, Dutch Beer Geek. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the idea. And uh, Joe from the Beer Patrol, thanks for uh, the idea to make sure I did cuvee these and that was the right call. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think of these beers? I mean, these are some classic old money, blah, 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 blah kind of beers. You know, I don't see them uh, talked about too much anymore, sadly. Um, I definitely, I know in December, I'll be buying a four-pack of St. Bernardus at my local beer store uh, to be aging again for sure. Um, I still have, I think, seven of the Westies. And actually, I'm out of Rochefort, so I should grab another one to age. Uh, but yeah, what do you guys think of these beers? Do you like them fresh, aged? Anything you want to discuss about these kinds of beers? I love these. They don't get enough love. So yeah, definitely um, uh, leave the comments below. We'll have conversations. I love that part. Thank you guys for watching. I always appreciate that, obviously. So thank you so much. Uh, check me out Instagram on tap. It's no hype beer reviews at both those places. So please, please like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, Cuvée. Cheers, everyone.